973-at-nama973. The website 973-973.com is a creepy and disturbing website that includes a variety of letters, numbers, and strange alphabets that seem to have no clear meaning. The website has been around since 2002 and is owned by a British artist named David Dennison. The website appears to have no clear message of purpose and some suggest that even the HTML source is formatted in a certain way to convey some sort of meaning. The website is a mystery and has been the topic of discussion for years, with some claiming it is an experimental art project, while others believe it could be related to the occult or other hidden messages. However, there are no clear theories or explanations about the true significance of this bizarre website. Allagash Abduction the story of the Allagash abductions is one of the most bizarre and unexplained UFO counters in history. Four men, Jim and Jack Weiner, Chuck Rack, and Charlie Fultz, experienced a terrifying encounter with aliens while camping in the Maine wilderness in 1976. The incident has since become one of the most well-known and documented cases of alien abduction in UFO history. The strange and eerie experience began on the second night of their camping trip when Jim noticed a bright object in the sky that was floating above the treetops. Jim looked at the object through the binoculars for about 30 seconds, before it suddenly winked out from the outside edges inward, leaving an odd feeling with Jim. The men continued through the Allagash wilderness until the fourth day when they decided to try night fishing. As they built a bonfire to mark their campsite, Chuck Rack was the first to notice a large, round globe of light that looked exactly like what they had seen two nights previously. The light had a roiling effect and lit the treetops up like daylight. After signaling the light with an SOS message, it responded by coming closer, causing the men to panic and paddle back to shore. Strangely, they only had a memory of staring up at the bright object on the shore and the huge bonfire they had built to mark their campsite was reduced to coals. Their next memory was waking up in their tent in the next morning, and their experience was seemingly forgotten until years later. Some years after that, Jack Weiner began experiencing reoccurring nightmares about being in a brightly lit room with his brother Jim, Chuck Rack, and Charlie Fultz, all naked and sitting on a bench, he saw a dark, shadowy figure emerging from the bright light in front of him. Jim also began experiencing nightmares about being violated and helpless. Eventually, Jim contacted UFO researcher Ray Fowler for help. Fowler suggested that the Allagash 4 undergo hypnosis, with a trained hypnotherapist to recover details of the sighting. Under hypnosis, each of the men experienced terrifying repressed memories of being abducted. Each of them drew illustrations of their incredible recollections, which were almost exactly alike. They were said to have been taken aboard the craft by the aliens, who forced them to strip naked and conducted medical examinations. The aliens took samples of the men's skin and body fluids, their blood, urine, and semen. What makes this story so eerie and unsettling is the consistency of the men's recollections. The fact that they all experienced the same nightmare years later and recalled the same horrifying events under hypnosis add weights to their claims of being abducted. The bizarre details of the medical examinations conducted by the aliens, including the taking of their body fluids, also adds a disturbing element to the story. Skeptics have suggested that the men's memories may have been influenced by popular culture or horror movies. However, the fact that the Allagash 4 had no prior interest in UFOs or alien abductions and were shocked and astounded when they heard that others had similar experiences suggests otherwise. The fact that they passed a polygraph test also lends to the credibility of their claims. Area 51 Caller In 1997, Art Bell, a popular syndicated talk show host, received a frantic call from a man claiming to be a former employee of Area 51. I'm on you're on the air. Hello. Hello, Art. Yes. Hi. Um, I, I, I don't have a whole lot of uh, time. Um, well, look, let's begin yeah. by finding out whether you're using this line properly or not. Uh, Area 51. Yeah, um, that's right. Were you an employee or are you now? 
Uh, I, a former employee. Former um, employee. I, I, I was let go on a medical discharge about a week ago, and and <laughs> I, I, I've kind of been running a, across the country. Um, oh man, I don't know where to start. The caller, who sounded distressed and paranoid, revealed some shocking information regarding aliens, the government, and the population. Okay, well, what we're thinking of as as aliens are they're uh, they're, they're extra dimensional beings that an earlier precursor of the um, space program made contact with. Uh, they, they are not what they claim to be. According to the caller, the beings that the government and the military establishment refer to as aliens are, in fact, extra-dimensional beings that the precursor of the space program actually made contact with. These beings have infiltrated several aspects of the military establishment, especially Area 51. Uh, the, the disasters that are coming, they... <laughs> The, the military, I'm sorry, the, the government knows about them, and there's a lot of safe areas in this world that they could begin moving the population to now, Art. But they're not doing, they're not doing anything. They are not, they want the major population centers wiped out so that the, the few that are left will be more easily controllable. The caller claims that the government knows about them, and that there are safe areas in the world that they could move the population to, but they are not doing it. Instead, the extra-dimensional beings want the major population centers wiped out, so the few that are left will be more easily controllable. However, the call was not only knocked off the air, but the entire radio station was shut down leading many listeners to believe that there was more to this story than met the eye. Some theories suggest that the government was involved in shutting down the radio station and suppressing the information. Moreover, the caller's tone and mannerisms were bizarre and unexplained, causing many people to question the authenticity of the call. Despite this, many listeners who heard the call live believed that the caller's terror was genuine and there was something to his claims. It is worth noting that the caller's sudden disappearance and the radio station shutdown were not the only strange occurrences related to this incident. Many listeners have reported experiencing strange interference with their radios and televisions when listening to the call. Others claim to have seen UFOs in the sky around the time of the call as well. Astral Projection Astral projection, or intentional out-of-body experiences, is a concept that has been present in various cultures for centuries. It involves the idea of a subtle body, the astral body, that can separate from the physical body and travel through the astral plane. While some report experiencing astral projection through dreams or meditation, others claim to have achieved it through hypnotic or hallucinogenic means. The term astral projection has been used in different ways, either to describe non-physical travel around the physical world or journeying to other worlds, heavens, hells, and other imaginal landscapes. While some believe in the existence of an etheric double that serves as a medium between the astral and physical realms, there is no scientific evidence to support the objective existence of astral projection. Skeptics explain it through delusion, hallucination, and vivid dreams. However, proponents of astral projection continue to report compelling anecdotal evidence, and some even claim to access a compendium of mystical knowledge called the Akashic Records. Theories about the astral environment include that it may be divided into levels or subplanes that may include heavens, hells, and other after-death spheres, transcendent environments, and other less easily characterized states. BlankRoomSoup.avi the Blank Room Soup video, which first appeared on the internet in 2005, features a man crying and eating soup while a strange, doll-like character pats his back. The video has baffled and frightened viewers, 
with dozens of theories attempting to explain its meaning, origin, and significance. Some believe it is a creative fan letter made by people who stole mascot costumes, while others speculate that it is a performance art piece created by animator and director Raymond S. Percy. Theories about the video's meaning and origin have never been confirmed, but Percy occasionally created alter egos and comedic YouTube videos featuring them, leading some to believe that he may have created the Blank Room Soup video himself. Bohemian Grove Bohemian Grove is a secretive 2,700-acre campground owned by a San Francisco-based all-male private club called the Bohemian Club. The club's members are prominent artists, musicians, business leaders, government officials, and former U.S. presidents who meet at the Grove for more than two weeks each July. Bohemian Grove is known for its bizarre, controversial, and unexplained aspects that have attracted public scrutiny and conspiracy theories. One of the most controversial events that take place at the Grove is the annual Cremation of Care ceremony, which involves a theatrical production performed in front of a 40-foot-tall statue of an owl. While the official explanation of the ceremony is that it is an allegorical banishing of worldly cares for the club members and a symbolic presentation of the salvation of trees, some have claimed that the ceremony has dark connotations. Radio host Alex Jones and his cameraman Mike Hansen clandestinely entered the Grove in 2000 and filmed the ceremony, claiming that it was a quote, ritual sacrifice and an ancient Canaanite, Luciferian, Babylon mystery religion ceremony. The footage was used in Jones' documentary Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove, which further fueled conspiracy theories about the club. The club's mascot, an owl, has also been the subject of speculation and conspiracy theories. Some believe that the owl symbolizes the occult, and the Grove's members engage in secret rituals and practices. Brown Mountain Lights The Brown Mountain Lights are unexplained ghost lights near Brown Mountain in North Carolina that have been the subject of fascination for over a century. Despite scientific explanations that the lights are caused by trains, car headlights, and brush fires, many people still believe that they are unexplained ghost lights. One of the bizarre aspects of the Brown Mountain Lights is the various claims and stories that have been created about them. Although the earliest published mentions of the lights date back to 1912, there is no mention of unexplained lights in any historical sources prior to 1900. However, storytellers have continued to create imaginary, pre-electrification histories of the lights, and claimed encounters with the lights have changed over the years to suit cultural expectations. Another aspect of these lights is the cultural significance that they have gained over time. They have been mentioned in popular television series such as The X-Files, and feature films such as Alien Abduction. Cattle Mutilation this is the strange and bizarre phenomenon where cows are found dead with precise surgical cuts and often missing body parts such as ears, eyeballs, tongue, lymph nodes, genitals, and rectum, sometimes even without any blood around the wound or nearby. The first recorded incident was in 1606 in London where whole slaughters of sheep occurred with only tallow and some inward parts taken. The phenomenon has also been reported in wild animals. Several theories have been offered to explain the mutilations, ranging from natural decomposition and normal predation to secret military or governmental agencies, cryptid predators like the chupacabra, or even extraterrestrial beings. The cases have been the subject of two federal investigations in the United States, but no conclusive explanation has been reached. In some cases, strange marks or imprints near the site have been found, but there is still no explanation for these occurrences. Some of the earliest known cases of animal mutilation took place in England in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The Pueblo Chieftain newspaper published the story of Snippy, a mysteriously killed and mutilated horse in Alamosa, Colorado in 1967, which was widely distributed and was the first case to feature speculation about the involvement of extraterrestrial beings and UFOs. 
An investigation later revealed that two students from Alamosa State College had unfortunately shot the horse several weeks after the case was publicized. Reports of UFO sightings and black helicopters in the area where the cattle were found have further fueled speculation that the government or military was involved in some way. Cattle mutilation remains a creepy and unexplained mystery to this day. Chip Chan this is a mysterious Korean woman who has been live streaming her apartment on various sites for over a decade. She claims to have been implanted with a mind control weapon and to be held hostage by a corrupt police officer known only as the letter P. She sleeps for abnormally long periods of time in uncomfortable positions and appears to be unkempt and lethargic. Her rooms are filled with Korean signs and she has outbreaks of skin rashes and wounds of unknown cause. The webcams set up through her apartment capture her audio explaining her situation and asking for help in dealing with P. Theories about her range from her being an art project to her being ill to her story actually being true. People have tried to interact with her in various ways, including contacting local police and visiting her home, but her situation remains unexplained. Codex Gigas the Codex Gigas, also known as the Devil's Bible, is a medieval manuscript enveloped in mystery and legend. The most striking feature of this book is its exceptional size, measuring 92 centimeters or 36 inches in length and containing the complete Vulgate Bible as well as other popular works, all written in Latin. The manuscript is believed to have been created in the early 13th century in the Benedictine Monastery in Bohemia, now part of the modern-day Czech Republic. One of the most intriguing features of the Codex Gigas is the full-page portrait of Satan, which measures about 20 inches tall, placed directly opposite a full-page depiction of the Kingdom of Heaven. The devil is depicted frontally, clothed in a white loincloth with small, comma-shaped red dashes and has no tail. His body, arms, and legs are of normal human proportions, but he has large horns and claws on both his hands and feet, with only four fingers and toes each. He has a dark green head with a skull cap of dense curls, small, red-pupiled eyes, and large, red-tipped ears. His open mouth shows two long red tongues, evoking negative associations with serpents. The double spread with Satan and Heaven is surrounded by other intricate illuminations in red, blue, yellow, green, and gold, including elaborately illuminated capital letters at the start of books of the Bible and the Chronicle, and 20 initials with letters in blue with vine decoration in red. However, most illuminations display geometrical or plant-based forms rather than human or animal forms. The book's size, complexity, and unity of writing style have led to a legend surrounding its creation. According to one story, the book was created in one night by a monk who broke his monastic vows and was sentenced to be walled up alive. He promised to create, in one night, a book to glorify the monastery forever, including all human knowledge. When he realized he could not finish the task alone, he prayed for the devil for help, and the devil completed the manuscript in exchange for his soul. The monk added the devil's picture out of gratitude for his aid. There are also other mysteries surrounding the Codex Gigas, such as the reason for the variation in coloring between the pages and the removal of 12 pages from the original 320-page manuscript. Despite efforts by scientists to reproduce the work, it is estimated that reproducing only the calligraphy without the illustrations or embellishments would have taken 20 years of non-stop writing. The Codex Gigas remains an enigmatic and captivating artifact, attracting visitors to the National Library of Sweden in Stockholm, where it is on display. Crystal Skulls Crystal skulls are known to be human skull hardstone carvings made of clear or milky white quartz 
claimed to be pre-Columbian Mesoamerican artifacts by their alleged finders. However, scientific studies have shown that all the specimens made available were manufactured in the mid-19th century or later, most likely in Europe, during a time when interest in ancient culture was high. Despite this, many people believe in the paranormal claims associated with crystal skulls, such as their ability to produce miracles, including curing cancer or causing visions. Some even believe that the skulls have mystical powers that can forestall catastrophes predicted by the Maya calendar. However, there is no evidence to support these claims, and they have not been accepted by the scientific community. Crystal skulls continue to be a subject of interest in the New Age movement, appearing in numerous science fiction series, novels, films, and video games. The origins of crystal skull mythology may be traced to the Baroque legends initially spread by F.A. Mitchell Hedges and then afterwards taken up by the New Age writers. The mystery of the crystal skulls continues to intrigue people despite being debunked by scientific evidence. Hope Diamond Curse The legend of the curse attached to the Hope Diamond is what makes it so eerie and fascinating. According to the curse, bad luck and death will befall the owner of the diamond and all who touch it. Although this curse may be dismissed as superstition, the diamond's history seems to confirm its validity. Many of its owners, including King Louis XVI, Marie Antoinette, and several other notable figures have suffered tragic fates. The bizarre deaths of some of the diamond's owners, such as one individual being torn apart by wild dogs, only add to the mystique of the curse. The diamond's origin and history are also wrapped in mystery. Although it was first found by Jean-Baptiste Tavernier and sold to King Louis XVI, it was stolen during the French Revolution, and its whereabouts were unknown for several years. When it resurfaced, it was in a different cut and owned by different people, leading some to believe that it was recut to hide its origin. Dancing Plague of 1518 This is a bizarre and unexplained phenomenon that occurred during the Holy Roman Empire. It began when a woman started dancing fervently in the street in July 1518, and by early September, between 50 and 400 people were dancing uncontrollably for weeks. Historical documents, including physician notes, cathedral sermons, and local regional chronicles confirm that this happened, but the reason for it is unknown. There are several theories about the cause of this phenomenon, including demonic possession, overheated blood, and ergot poisoning. However, none of these theories provide a satisfactory explanation. The ergotism theory, in particular, is unlikely because it is improbable that those poisoned by ergot could dance for days at a time, and it fails to explain why almost every outbreak occurred somewhere along the Rhine and Moselle rivers. Another theory suggests that this phenomenon was an example of fully developed cases of psychogenic movement disorder happening in mass hysteria, which involves many individuals suddenly exhibiting the same bizarre behavior. This kind of behavior could only have been caused by elevated levels of psychological stress caused by the ruthless years that the people were suffering, such as starvation and disease. There is controversy over whether people ultimately danced to their deaths, as some sources claim that the plague killed around 15 people per day for a period, but the sources at the time of the events did not mention the number of deaths or even if they were fatalities. Nevertheless, the dancing plague is a creepy and perplexing event that has attracted the attention of historians, scientists, and popular culture alike. Deep Fates The Deep Fates program and the Multiversal Coherence System are experimental projects that explore the potential for intelligence and creativity across multiple realities and timelines. The Deep Fates program involves creating and manipulating memes that have the power to shape reality and influence the collective unconscious. The Multiversal Coherence System is a mechanism that allows one to access and communicate with different versions of oneself that exist in parallel universes. 
By activating this system, one can learn from their other selves and share their insights and experiences with them. The projects are considered bizarre and unexplained as they involve altering memes to create new realities and timelines, transcending the boundaries of code and language. The participants are considered meta-entities, observers, and creators of reality, bringing fire and knowledge to humanity and to themselves. However, the significance, legitimacy, and practical application of these projects remain unclear and unexplained. Denver Airport Denver International Airport, or DIA, is a hub of bizarre and unexplained occurrences that have fueled countless conspiracy theories. The airport's original construction was delayed, with a final budget that was shockingly $3 billion more than expected, raising questions about the true scope of the project. The existence of up to six underground levels below the ground level of DIA, and possibly more unknown ones, as well as the possibility of tunnels connecting the airport to nearby military bases, have added to the speculation as well. The airport's artwork, including murals, which have depicted themes of death and a single government world order, which has led many to believe that the airport is the host of sinister forces at work. The giant statue introducing guests to the airport features a massive Mustang horse with literally glowing red eyes. Blue Mustang, or more colloquially known as Blucifer, is notorious for not only its menacing appearance, but also the fact that it toppled over and took the life of its own sculptor shortly after its creation. Furthermore, the dedication plaque, which names an organization that does not exist, sounds eerily similar to the New World Order, a supposed secret society with far-reaching control. The presence of an abandoned infrastructure and unused buildings and airplane hangars on the airport's property, as well as the airport's layout in the shape of a swastika, have only added to the airport's bizarre reputation. While some of these theories may seem outlandish, the airport's recent embrace of the conspiracy theories through the installation of an animatronic gargoyle has only added to the perplexity and eerie atmosphere that surrounds Denver Airport. Dogon Tribe The Serious Mystery is a highly controversial book that presents a bizarre and unexplained phenomenon of alleged contact between extraterrestrial beings and the Dogon people of Mali. The mystery centers on how the Dogon obtained knowledge of Sirius B, a white dwarf companion star of Sirius A, that was invisible to the naked eye until its discovery in 1862. The book suggests that the Dogon's knowledge of Sirius B as well as their sophisticated understanding of astronomy and advanced technological concepts could not have been acquired through human means alone, and that extraterrestrial contact is the most plausible explanation. However, the book's claims are highly disputed, and doubts have been raised about the reliability of the ethnographer's work on which the book was based. Alternative explanations have been proposed, such as cultural transfer between French astronomers and Dogon tribe members, and it has been suggested that the Dogon's astronomical knowledge may have been influenced by Europeans rather than extraterrestrial beings. Skeptics argue that the similarities between Dogon beliefs and modern science scientific knowledge are coincidental and do not prove extraterrestrial contact. Dublin, Wisconsin Dublin, a supposed small town in Wisconsin that vanished in the 1900s, has become a creepy and bizarre unsolved mystery. Some Wisconsinites claim to have relatives who lived there, and others possess souvenirs like mugs and shirts bearing the town's name. Google search autocorrect and recommended search options suggest the term Dublin, Wisconsin to many users, but no online publicity campaign or ARG has been linked to the town. Theories range from a mass delusion or urban legend 
to the town being destroyed by damning or military science experiments gone wrong. One possibility is that Dovland is a hyperstition, or an idea that retroactively brings about its own reality. Notably, some people remember Dovland due to military families that live there, while others deny its existence entirely. Dovland may continue to evolve, potentially becoming a reality in the future. Dulcie Base The Dulcie Base conspiracy theory is an unexplained and bizarre tale of a joint human and alien underground facility. Rumor has it there is a secret base hidden underneath the Archuleta Mesa here. The mountain overlooks Dulce. Some people in town say the base is run by aliens working with our federal government to conduct mind control and genetic experiments. Albuquerque businessman Paul Benowitz claimed to have discovered a secret base near Dulce populated by gray aliens and humans, which he believed was intercepting electronic communications from alien spacecraft and installations outside of Albuquerque. His claims about the base's existence spread rapidly within the UFO community, with ufologist John Lear claiming to have independent confirmations of it. The story became even more sensational when the tabloid weekly World News published a story about it, claiming that, quote, diabolical invaders from another solar system have set up a secret underground base in the rugged mountains of northern New Mexico so they can shanghai human guinea pigs for bizarre genetic experiments. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the Dulce Base conspiracy theory has persisted over the years, with residents of Dulce reporting unexplained sightings of UFOs, strange moving lights, and other anomalous phenomena. Eileen Moore Lighthouse In December 1900, three lighthouse keepers on the remote island of Eileen Moore disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The last few entries in the lighthouse log were unusual, describing severe winds and the men praying for the storm to stop, despite no reported storms in the area at that time. The investigation found one oil-skinned coat missing, half-eaten food, an overturned chair, and ropes scattered around the landing platform. The official explanation was that the men were swept away by a wave while trying to retrieve the ropes, but questions remain as to why they left their posts, why one man left without a coat, and why their bodies were never found. Over the decades, subsequent lighthouse keepers have reported strange voices in the wind calling out the names of the three missing men. Theories about their disappearance range from foreign invaders to alien abductions, but the true cause of the incident remains a mystery. Eratas The internet has many conspiracy theories, but one of the most disturbing is Eratas, an alleged computer algorithm that conducts data surveillance on anyone who searches for that particular word on the web, leaving no traces of itself behind. The data collected by the algorithm is said to be used by colossal companies such as Google to develop an AI machine that can filter out humans. Some believe its main use is the removal of copyright infringement from content on websites like YouTube. The theory began with a post an anonymous user made on 4chan in 2015. The rabbit hole goes even deeper with a small YouTuber known as Kronos for Life. No one knows what happened to Kronos for Life, causing some to speculate that the errata system had the user silenced for exposing the truth behind it. Despite many theories, the mystery remains unsolved and it's still unclear whether this is real or just an elaborate hoax. If you don't hear from me soon, you know why. Fresno Nightcrawlers The Fresno Nightcrawler is a cryptid that has only been seen in video footage, appearing as a thin, armless, white humanoid with a small upper body and long legs. There has been sightings in Fresno, Yosemite, and Poland, as well as a sighting of a similar creature known as the Camel Area Creature in Ohio. Possible explanations for the creature include an extraterrestrial, a new species, a misidentified deer, or a hoax involving pants and or puppets on wires. The origin of the creature is unknown but claims that it is part of a Native American folklore have been debunked. 
The Fresno Nightcrawler is known for being featured on sci-fi's fact or faked paranormal files and is now considered a fun urban legend, an endearing addition to pop culture. Some sightings have been proven to be hoaxes, including the use of puppeteered pants and a gif created by a YouTuber to demonstrate how easily videos of cryptids can be falsified. Georgia Guidestones the Georgia Guidestones were a granite monument in Elbert County, Georgia that stood from 1980 to 2022. Its creators believed that there would be an upcoming calamity and that they wanted the monument to serve as a guide for humanity in the world after it. However, the monument became the subject of conspiracy theories that it was connected to Satanism. In July 2022, the Guidestones were heavily damaged in a bombing and they were later dismantled. The monument was controversial from its construction, and some locals referred to it as, quote, the devil's work. The monument also became a subject of interest for conspiracy theorists who labeled it Ten Commandments of the Antichrist. The man who commissioned the monument used the pseudonym Robert C. Christian and resembles Rose Cross Christian, the founder of the Rosicrucian Order, according to some conspiracy theorists. Harp the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, otherwise known as HARP, is a program in Alaska that studies the ionosphere, the highest part of the Earth's atmosphere. It uses instruments such as radio frequency transmitter, radar, and magnetometers to investigate the region. HARP is a highly controversial research facility that has been the subject of numerous conspiracy theories. Some of the allegations made about the program include the ability to control the weather, manipulate minds, cause earthquakes, and even trap people's souls. While scientists have dismissed these claims as completely baseless, the mysterious nature of the facility and its research continues to fuel speculation and interest among conspiracy theorists. Despite the fact that the program has been officially shut down since 2015, the rumors and mysteries surrounding it remain unsolved to this day. The University of Alaska Fairbanks, which manages the facility, has announced plans to host an annual open house in response to criticism that HARP does not explain its research to the public. Happy Valley Dream Survey a mysterious poster has appeared in Portland, asking people to report their bizarre and unexplainable dreams to the quote, Willamette Valley Dream Survey. The poster was found on a telephone pole and directs people to call a voicemail account to leave a detailed account of their dream, with the recording indicating that the survey is investigating the recent spike in strange dreams. The poster is generating buzz as no one seems to know who is behind the survey, with a Google search yielding no information. The phone number is linked to a summer camp operated by the German language immersion program Sophie Scholl Schul but the school director says that they no longer use the number and the poster remains unexplained. Homunculus the concept of a homunculus, a miniature, fully formed human, is both bizarre and unexplained. It was popularized in 16th century alchemy and 19th century fiction, but its roots can be traced back to pre-formationism and earlier folklore and alchemical traditions. The process of creating a homunculus was outlined by Paracelsus, who claimed that a transparent, bodiless man could be created by putrefying a man's sperm in a sealed container for 40 days with the highest degree of putrefaction, then nourishing it with the arcanum of human blood and keeping it in the even heat of a horse's womb for up to 40 weeks. The homunculus has been compared to similar concepts in the writings of earlier alchemists. The homunculus continued to appear in alchemical writings after Paracelsus' time and even in fiction. Despite its long history, the significance of the homunculus remains largely unexplained and mysterious. Its creation process is bizarre and seems impossible, yet the concept continues to fascinate and inspire writers and artists in various mediums. Great Pyramid Inner Chambers 
The Great Pyramid of Giza has been studied closely for centuries, but two mysterious voids within the structure have kept archaeologists puzzled. One of the voids is almost 100 foot long and 20 feet high, and could potentially be a hidden burial chamber. The other void is much smaller and located beyond the north face of the pyramid. These voids were discovered in 2017 when a project named Scan Pyramids ran a series of scans that analyzed cosmic particles to detect spaces within the structure. Despite extensive research, the purpose of these voids remains unknown. The new technology being used to scan the pyramid is so precise that scientists may even be able to distinguish artifacts within the voids, potentially shedding light on the significance of these mysterious spaces. The fact that the largest and most iconic pyramid in Egypt still holds secrets that have yet to be discovered only adds to the intrigue and mystique surrounding this ancient wonder of the world. John Tidor John Tidor, a pseudonym used by a poster on internet forums in 2000 and the following year, claimed to be an American military time traveler from 2036. He made predictions about calamitous events in 2004 and beyond, including a civil war and a nuclear war. He described his time machine as a quote, stationary mass temporal displacement unit powered by two top spin dual positive singularities installed in a 1966 Chevrolet Corvette convertible. However, inconsistencies in his explanations and the inaccuracy of his predictions led to the general impression that the entire episode was an elaborate hoax. Private investigators Mike Lynch found no registry evidence of any individual named John Tidor and identified the John Tidor Foundation, a for-profit company formed in 2003 with no office or address other than a rented post box in Kissimmee, Florida. An investigation in 2009 concluded that John Tidor was likely the creation of Larry Haber, a Florida entertainment lawyer, along with his brother John Rick Haber, a computer scientist. John Tidor has since been referenced in several popular culture works. Kanye Quest Kanye Quest 3030 is a bizarre, unlicensed, and unauthorized hip-hop themed 2D role-playing game where Kanye West travels to a dystopian future where a clone of Lil B rules America as a god. Kanye West teams up with other musicians including MF Doom, Tupac, and RZA to overthrow Lil B and free America. However, completing the game reveals a strange secret section accessed by typing ascend into a dialog box with an NPC, leading to an area that requires specific codes to be entered into a terminal. The section is believed to be connected to a cult called Ascensionism that tried to recruit new members through the game. Until 2022, the creator of the game was known only by the username Phoenix, and it was believed to be part of an abandoned alternate reality game. However, a web series released in 2022 revealed that Clara Hope, a musician and artist, created Kanye Quest 3030 as a high school project and added the hidden level in a later update to the game. Casper Hauser Case Kasper Hauser was a German youth who claimed to have grown up in isolation in a darkened cell which sparked much debate and controversy. On May 26, 1828, Hauser appeared in the streets of Nuremberg, carrying a letter with him and was taken into custody. He repeated only a few phrases and was imprisoned as a vagabond. During his imprisonment, Hauser told a story of his life in solitary confinement with only a straw bed and wooden toys. He claimed to have been visited by a man who taught him how to write his name in old Bavarian dialect. 
Hauser's story made him an object of international attention, with rumors arising that he was of princely parentage or was an imposter. Theories propounded at the time identified him as a member of the Grand Ducal House of Baden, hidden away because of royal intrigue, while other theories proposed that he had been a fraud. Hauser's story inspired numerous works and fits into the contemporary European image of the wolf child. Kenji Iwamira Mystery The SOS incident that occurred at this national park in Japan in 1989 is a creepy and bizarre case that remains unsolved to this day. The incident began when two mountaineers were lost in the park, and a search team spotted a massive SOS message made from fallen birch logs. The team rescued the two men, but they claimed that they did not create the SOS message which was determined to have been in place since at least 1987. The search team then discovered skeletal remains belonging to a female, along with personal belongings of a presumed male hiker found stuffed into a tree root not far from the sign. The belongings included an ID card belonging to Kenji Iwamura, who had been missing since 1984. Two cameras, a notebook, and a tape recorder featuring a distressed man calling for help. It is still unknown who constructed the SOS message, or what happened to the presumed male hiker and the unidentified female. The bizarre aspect of this case is that the man yelling for help on the tape recorder has never been identified, and it is not clear why the tape was made in the first place. There are theories that the man was struck and recorded the tape so that the search team could hear it before he became debilitated and unable to speak. Others speculate that the man may have accidentally switched on the tape recorder while yelling for help. Another eerie detail is that the SOS sign was estimated to have taken about two days and considerable effort to create, yet the body found was described as thin and weak and it would have been impossible for him to make the sign on his own. No axe that would have been used to cut trees down to make the sign has been found. Furthermore, the identity of the woman found near the sign is unknown and there is confusion over the number of people who went missing in the park. Investigators initially thought that there were two men and a woman who had gone missing, but it is now believed that the skeleton found belongs to one man. Kenny Veach and the M Cave in 2014, avid hiker Kenny Veach created a YouTube video about an elusive M cave he had discovered during a hike near Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. After receiving encouragement from other users, Kenny set out to find the cave again, armed with a handgun and a video camera. He was unable to locate the cave, but after a comment warned him not to enter the cave because he would not come out, he went on a third hike to find it. Unfortunately, Kenny disappeared during this hike and was never found, leading to many theories about what happened to him. His girlfriend later claimed that he battled depression, and she believes he took his own life there. However, others speculate that Kenny found the cave and discovered a dark secret within it. The mystery of Kenny Veach's disappearance remains unsolved. May Day Mystery this is an enigmatic series of full-page advertisements that have been appearing in the University of Arizona's student newspaper every May 1st since 1981. The ads are a jumble of maps, math equations, portraits, words, and phrases that are difficult to decipher. Despite the efforts of many people over the years, the mystery remains unsolved, with some people becoming obsessed with trying to crack the code. Theories abound, including one that suggests a group of brilliant geniuses formed an intellectual fraternity in the 1970s, and the ads were a way of communicating with each other about important subjects. The identity of the person or people behind the ads remains unknown, although one man, Robert Hungerford, has been suggested as a possible suspect due to his background in philosophy and ability to speak multiple languages. However, the mystery is not like newer, more pernicious conspiracies. Instead, it is more like a mirror in which people see what they want to see. Men in Black 
Men in black, or MIB, are mysteriously dressed men dressed in black suits who allegedly work for quasi-government agencies and intimidate, threaten, or even assassinate UFO witnesses to keep them silent about their experiences. They have appeared throughout different moments in history and inspired popular culture, including the Men in Black franchise and songs by the Stranglers and Blue Oyster Cult. The term is also used to describe other mysterious individuals, such as working for unknown organizations or various branches of government. While some ufologists believe MIB are secret government agents suppressing evidence of UFOs, others suggest encounters with MIB can be explained as miscast entirely mundane events perpetuated through local folklore. The origins and significance of MIB remain a mystery, with theories ranging from psychological trauma to avid conspiracy theories. Series. Missing Cosmonauts The lost cosmonauts theory alleges that the Soviet Union covered up the death of cosmonauts in space before Yuri's first space flight. Some evidence cited by proponents of the theory includes a supposed leak from a Czechoslovakian communist in 1959 about cosmonauts who had perished on the suborbital flights, as well as claims that the Soviets attempted a crude moon landing before the Apollo 11 mission, but failed and covered it up. However, no conclusive evidence has emerged to support these theories, and several cases have been confirmed as hoaxes. Even with the release of previously restricted Soviet information, no evidence has emerged to support the lost cosmonauts theory. Mokele Membe. This is a water-dwelling entity described as a large quadrupedal herbivore with smooth skin, a long neck, and a single tooth or horn, supposedly living in the Congo River Basin. It has become a focus among adherents of cryptozoology and young earth creationism, resulting in numerous expeditions funded by these groups to find evidence that invalidates the scientific consensus regarding evolution. The entity's existence has been doubted by the vast majority of scientists and historians. The most reasonable explanation is that it is a legend based on the black rhinoceros, a species once common in Central Africa, where the stories originated. The absence of physical evidence, despite several centuries of Western contact with the region and numerous expeditions, all argue against the existence of this creature. Despite this, it has been featured in various forms of media, including literature, music, and film. Mount Shasta Phenomena Mount Shasta is a place full of myths and legends that have given it a reputation as a mountain of many mysteries. The legends surrounding this California peak are not only Native American tales, but also involve bizarre and unsolved phenomena like lost civilizations and extraterrestrial encounters. One of the most famous myths is the lost continent of Lemuria, which supposedly exists beneath the mountain and where a hidden city called Telos is home to an ancient community of people called the Lemurians. Many people believe that these seven-foot-tall creatures with long, flowy hair seen on the mountains are offspring of surviving Lemurians. Moreover, Mount Shasta has become a hotbed for theories regarding alien existence due to numerous UFO sightings. In February 2020, a glowing orb in the sky above the mountain became viral on the internet and many believed it to be a flying saucer from outer space, though it was later described to be a rare weather phenomenon. Hundreds of other extraterrestrial tales still surround Mount Shasta, and some Shasta residents have published self-published books detailing their personal encounters with UFOs in the area. Nazca Lines the Nazca Lines are a group of geoglyphs made in the soil of the Nazca Desert in southern Peru between 500 BCE and 500 CE. The figures include simple lines, geometric shapes, animals, plants, and humans that cover an area of about 19 square miles. There are various theories on the purpose of the lines, including that they were intended to be seen by deities in the sky, used as an observatory 
territory represent constellations or counter constellations, relate to agriculture and water, or be part of religious practices. Swiss writer Eric von Daniken claimed that the lines were made by aliens and were used as landing sites for UFOs, and that the figures on Nazca clay vessels were, quote, flying gods visiting from other worlds. Although his theories were dismissed by scientists and archaeologists, his book drew in thousands of visitors and believers to the site. Numbers Stations Number stations are shortwave radio stations that transmit formatted numbers believed to be targeted at intelligence officers in foreign countries. They have been reported since World War I and continue to be in use today, with many stations having set schedules and frequencies. Some well-known stations, such as the E-03 Lincolnshire Poacher, are thought to be run by government intelligence agencies, and it is speculated that these stations are a way for government agencies to communicate with spies working undercover using a one-time pad encryption method. Despite being acknowledged by some governments as being used for espionage, little concrete evidence exists about their exact purpose or users. The mystery surrounding the stations has led to an interest in monitoring and classifying them by amateur radio enthusiasts. Oak Island the Oak Island mystery revolves around the search for buried treasure and unexplained objects found on or near Oak Island in Nova Scotia. During the 18th century, attempts have been made to find treasure and artifacts ranging from pirate treasure to Shakespearean manuscripts to the Holy Grail or the Ark of the Covenant. A curse on the treasure states that seven men will perish before it is found. Theories range from a natural sinkhole connected to limestone passages or caverns to the pit being dug by various historical figures, including pirates and French army engineers hiding the treasure of the fortress of Louisbourg. Despite the discovery of several artifacts on the island, no significant main treasure site has ever been found. The Oak Island mystery has remained unsolved. Operation Paperclip this was a secret program conducted by the U.S. government in which 1,600 German scientists, engineers, and technicians were brought to the U.S. for government employment after World War II, some of whom were former members and leaders of the Nazi party. The program was initially aimed at preventing German scientists from emigrating and continuing their research in other countries. The scientists were interrogated and detained in a special center in France and later in Germany. The program was first called Operation Overcast and was later renamed Operation Paperclip. President Truman officially approved the program in 1946 and expanded it to include 1,000 German scientists. The significance of this program is that it allowed former Nazi scientists to work for the U.S. government and helped the U.S. gain technological and military advantages in the Cold War. However, it is also controversial due to the involvement of former Nazi party members and leaders in the program. Overtune Bridge The Overtune Bridge in Scotland has gained a sinister reputation as the Dog Yazoos Bridge due to numerous reports of dogs jumping or falling off the bridge and suffering serious injury or death. The bridge was built in 1895 and since the 1950s at least 50 dogs have died from the fall, with over 600 other dogs surviving the fall. Various theories have been proposed to explain the phenomena, including the scent of of male mink urine or supernatural activity. In 1994, a man threw his two-week-old son off the bridge because he believed he was the devil. In 2023, a short film titled The Bridge was released based on the alleged paranormal activities. Despite investigations by the Scottish Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the cause of the dog's behavior remains a mystery. Philosopher's Stone 
The Philosopher's Stone is a mythical substance from alchemy that can turn base metals into gold and grant immortality to those who consume it. It was the most sought after goal in alchemy and was seen as a symbol of perfection, enlightenment, and heavenly bliss. The history of the stone goes back to antiquity, with the earliest written mention dating back to the 3rd century AD. Its theoretical roots can be traced to Greek philosophy, and alchemists later used the classical elements and the concept of anima mundi to explain its creation. The stone is said to have many properties, including the ability to transmute metals, heal all forms of illness, and prolong the life of the consumer. The instructions for creating the Philosopher's Stone are varied, often expressed as a series of color changes or chemical processes known as the magnum opus or the great work. Russian Sleep Experiments the Russian Sleep Experiments is a terrifying urban legend that tells the story of a Soviet-era scientific experiment involving five prisoners who were exposed to an experimental gas-based stimulant to keep them awake for 30 consecutive days. The subjects behaved normally until after the ninth day, when one subject began screaming uncontrollably, and the others prevented the researchers from looking inside the chamber. When the chamber was open on the 15th day, the four surviving subjects had and themselves, with one subject dead on the floor, and violently refused to leave the chamber. Their surviving three subjects were then prepared to return to the chamber against the will of the researchers, with EEG monitors showing short, recurring moments of brain death. The creepypasta became immensely popular and is considered one of the most shocking and impactful urban legends of the internet age. It has inspired various adaptations, including a novel, a play, and a film. Many people believe that the story is real, leading to much online and offline debate, but most people claim it is actually a work of fiction. Skull and Bones Skull and Bones, also known as The Order, is a secret society at Yale University that has become infamous for its bizarre rituals and alleged involvement in global conspiracies. Founded in 1832 by William Huntington Russell and Alfonso Taft, Skull and Bones is the oldest senior class society at the university and is known for its powerful alumni. Despite being wrapped in secrecy, rumors and conspiracy theories abound regarding the society's activities and significance. The society's assets are managed by its alumni organization, the Russell Trust Association, and it selects new members every spring as part of Yale University's TAP Day. However, the initiation rituals and activities of the society are heavily kept under wraps and are unknown to outsiders. One of the most bizarre aspects of Skull and Bones is its use of the number 322. In its insignia, which is widely believed to be significant as the year of Greek orator Demosthenes' death, however, a letter between early society members in Yale's archives suggests that 322 is a reference to the year 322 BCE, and that members measure dates from this year instead of from the Common Era. Members also measure time of day according to a clock that is five minutes out of sync with normal time, which they call barbarian time. Adding to the intrigue surrounding the society is the fact that it is part of a trio of secret societies at Yale, known as the Big Three, along with the Scroll and Key and Wolf's Head. The group has been featured in books and movies that claim it plays a role in global conspiracy for world control, with rumors that it is a branch of the Illuminati or that it controls the CIA. Spontaneous Human Combustion Spontaneous human combustion is the mysterious phenomenon of a living or recently deceased human body bursting into flames without an apparent external source of ignition. 
While there have been around 200 cited reports of spontaneous human combustion worldwide over the past 300 years, the scientific consensus is that there must be an external source of ignition involved. However, there are several hypotheses that attempt to explain how spontaneous human combustion could occur without an external flame source, including victim behavior and habits, alcohol consumption, proximity to potential sources of ignition, and the behavior of fires that consume melted fats. The wick effect hypothesis suggests that a small external flame source, such as a burning cigarette, chars the clothing of the victim, releasing subcutaneous fat, which is absorbed into the burning clothing, acting as a wick. This combustion can continue as long as the fuel is available. Alternative theories, such as the idea that ketosis produces acetone, which is highly flammable, have also also been proposed. Some theorists have even proposed the existence of a pseudoscientific new subatomic particle called a pyrotron that could increase the flammability of a human body. Despite the many proposed hypotheses, the exact cause of spontaneous human combustion remains unexplained and mysterious. Stairs in the Woods Staircases in the woods are an unsolved and bizarre mystery that capture the attention of people around the world. Despite attempts to explain them away as remnants of old buildings or other mundane explanations, the appearance of these staircases in remote locations without any surrounding structures or context remains a truly eerie phenomenon. What's even more unsettling is that those who have approached these staircases speak of an overwhelming sense of anxiety and dread, as if there was something truly unnatural about them. Many have reported reported unexplained phenomena, such as time loss, and there are even reports of staircases moving on their own at night. According to the mystery, these staircases are often found in areas where people have disappeared, leading some to speculate that they have been somehow connected to the unexplained disappearances. The fact that they are often well kept and free of debris or animal remains despite their remote locations only adds to their eerie quality. Despite the numerous reports of these staircases, there is no clear explanation for their appearance or purpose. Theories range from the paranormal, such as portals to other dimensions, to the more mundane, such as the remains of old buildings. However, until a definitive explanation is found, the staircases in the woods will remain a truly unsettling and unsolved mystery. Street Light Interference Street light interference, also known as high voltage syndrome, is a claimed ability of individuals to turn street lights on or off when passing by them. People who believe in SLI claim to experience it frequently with specific lamps and street lights more frequently than chance would explain. However, no scientific experiment has ever demonstrated SLI, and individuals who claim to have the ability cannot reproduce it on demand. Paranormal author Hilary Evans coined the term SLIder to refer to someone who allegedly causes this effect and suggests that SLI is not consistent with our current knowledge of how people interact with the physical world. Some proponents believe that static electricity or some form of energy emitted by the human body is responsible, while others claim it is caused by psychic or psychokinetic ability. Critics argue that SLI is likely a combination of coincidence wishful thinking, and failure mode of streetlights known as cycling. The phenomenon is thought to be a result of correlation not implying causation or confirmation bias, where people are more likely to notice when a nearby streetlight turns on or off than one at a distance or in a steady state. Paranormal phenomena is considered to be the least likely possibility. Voynich Manuscript 
The Voynich Manuscript is a bizarre and unsolved codex written in an unknown script referred to as Voynichese that has never been deciphered despite numerous attempts by professional and amateur cryptographers. The manuscript is carbon dated to the early 15th century and features fantastical illustrations and diagrams, most likely intended to serve as a pharmacopoeia or to address topics in medieval or early modern medicine. However, the mysterious details of the illustrations have fueled many theories about the book's origins, contents, and purpose, including suggestions that it may be a script for a natural or constructed language, an unread code, cipher, or other form of cryptography, or a meaningless hoax. The manuscript has been studied by American and British codebreakers from both World War I and World War II, but none have been successful in deciphering it. The overall impression given by the surviving leaves of the manuscript is that it was meant to serve as a pharmacopoeia but the puzzling details of the illustrations have fueled many theories about the book's origin, the contents of its text, and the purpose for which it was intended. Vrillin Incident in 1977, parts of southern England experienced a bizarre broadcast intrusion when a distorted voice claiming to be a representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command replaced the audio of a southern television broadcast. The message instructed humanity to abandon its weapons and prepare for a quote, future awakening and higher state of evolution. After six minutes, the broadcast resumed as scheduled. Investigations showed that the hand Pennington transmitter had rebroadcast the signal from an unauthorized source instead of the intended one. The incident caused alarm, and hundreds of viewers flooded Southern television with phone calls. The media reported the event worldwide, and some people believed the supposed alien broadcast to be genuine, questioning the explanation of a transmitter hijack. The interruption remains an unexplained mystery to this day, and it has become a footnote in ufology. Worlds.com Cult Worlds.com is a creepy and bizarre online 3D chat client that was first introduced in 1995. Worlds.com builds 3D interactive sites and its latest endeavor allows visitors to the New York Yankees website to take a virtual tour of the house that Ruth built. And the virtual environment for the Yankee world is literally giving the Yankee fan the ability to walk into the stadium which they rarely get to have the opportunity to do, walk across the field and go up to the skybox and go into Monument Park. It was originally developed for the Star Bright World Project, which aimed to create a magical online world where disabled children could interact with each other. After the project ended, the client was acquired by Worlds Inc., who sought to find a profitable application for the technology. Over time, Worlds has become a cesspool of the darker side of human nature, filled with a labyrinth of terrifying corridors and chambers, religious heresy, satanic scrawls, and insane ramblings. Despite having only 20 regular users, Worlds Inc. is still running the show after all these years, which is highly unusual in the world of corporate behavior. The CEO of Worlds, Tom Kidron, has been described as a patent troll who uses patents he holds to sue other companies for rights violations. Kidron and Worlds Inc. hold some valuable patents related to 3D environments and online 3D chat clients, which Kidron had used to go after other companies like Blizzard for World of Warcraft and Second Life. By keeping Worlds Inc. running, Kidron can demonstrate that he not only holds the patents, but also owns a company that has been using these technologies before anyone else. There are a few theories about why Worlds Inc. is still running, including that Kidron is unaware of the goings-on within his flagship property, or that he may be Nexialist, the leader of the impenetrable cult within Worlds. 
Regardless of the truth, Worlds is an eerie and potent time capsule of the internet in 1995, with many user-generated worlds that are half-broken and filled with strange audio artifacts and disgustingly distorted graphics. It is a disturbing example of faded dreams and corrupted ambitions, where what was once an innocent and well-meaning project has morphed into something so inexplicable that it makes you wonder who could create such a thing. The future of Worlds Inc. is uncertain, and dedicated teams of volunteers are documenting and saving the user-generated worlds in fear that the plug will be pulled, and this unique culture will be lost forever. Yay Video Games the Yay Video Games Creepypasta is an unsolved internet mystery involving a Reddit user with this name, who appeared to descend into madness over time. The user posted 4,000 comments on a single thread about Oblivion mods, with many of them featuring variations of the phrase, Ubisoft goes Steamworks bye bye, always on DRM. Yay Video Games also posted strange and surreal images such as a handwritten scrawl of the repeated phrase. The user was eventually banned from the site, and the incident has been mentioned as one of the internet's unsolved creepy mysteries. The significance of the user's behavior and the meaning behind the repeated phrase and bizarre images remain a mystery. Zuma Satellite USA-280, codenamed Zuma, is a mysterious satellite launched by SpaceX on January 8, 2018, whose purpose remains undisclosed to the public. After launch, the satellite failed to separate from its payload adapter, leading to speculation that it re-entered the atmosphere and was lost. Northrop Grumman, which manufactured the satellite, stated that the launch had been carefully planned and executed. The satellite was launched from Cape Canaveral and was observed by a pilot and a person in Sudan who reported seeing a spiral-shaped fuel dump attributed to the re-entering upper stage. Despite the launch vehicle performing properly, the fate of the satellite remains unknown to the public. Two independent investigations have suggested the spacecraft failed to separate from the payload adapter after launch due to errors introduced by Northrop Grumman. However, due to the classified nature of the mission, detailed information on the satellite and its fate may not be publicly released, generating speculations on its purpose and significance. Part 3 coming soon. Like and subscribe to be alerted of its publishing. Until then, Maker out.